Welcome to the Unreal Directive. In this video, I'll be teaching you how you can get started with modular game features, which is a new system in Unreal Engine 5. As an important note, I'll be covering this in Unreal Engine 5 Early Access 2, so there's definitely going to be changes between now and the official release. Make sure you're subscribed because I'll be covering all those changes and a whole lot more. All right, let's dive into this. All right, from within Unreal Engine 5, there's going to be two plugins that you need to enable. So head on over to the top left, hit Edit, Plugins, open up the plugin window, and in the search field, type in Modular. The two plugins you need to enable are right here, Game Features and Modular Gameplay. So go ahead and enable those and hit Restart Now. We got a little, little waiting going on here. And we're done. So when you enable those and when the engine restarts, you're going to be prompted with this warning or error in the message log. So basically what this is, is that you need to add something to your uh, asset manager pretty much. Um, you don't have to worry about that because uh, Epic provides a one-click solution, which is right here at the end. So when you're prompted with this error, just go ahead and click Add Entry to Primary Asset Types to Scan, and it's fixed. You don't have to worry about this error. You can go ahead and close that. So now the question is, how do you go about creating a modular game feature? It's actually quite simple. It's the same way you create a typical plugin. So inside of the Plugins window here at the bottom right, there's going to be New Plugin. Go ahead and click that. And now right here in the, the blah, 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 blah plugin templates, there's game feature here. So you go ahead and select that, give it a name. Um, in this case, I'm gonna do example feature as a name. Uh, author, it's gonna be Tezanari. Description and example game feature. And that's pretty much it. You hit create and you're going to be prompted with this new window here. I'm going to go ahead and close the, the plugins window here. We don't need it anymore. Um, so right here, this is basically how you control the game feature. So you have the feature state, category, actions, and game features, asset types. So what I'm going to be focusing on right here is going to be the feature states and actions. So under feature state, there's an initial state. This is essentially the state that the game feature loads in, um, either for the editor or for gameplay. So right now you see that's active. In order to change this, click Edit Plugin. The plugin properties are going to be added here. Um, and then you can basically designate the initial state. Um, installed, registered, loaded, active. Active is essentially, it's on. Um, but I highly recommend switching it to registered um, and controlling it manually that way. Uh, it's really up to how you want to implement it, but registered is a very safe start. Um, so when I switch out the registered, you're going to have the typical plugin details. I'm not really going to cover that in this video, possibly in another video. Um, you have the icon and then dependencies. So dependencies is pretty important, uh, especially if, Let's say, for example, your game feature has Niagara particles, for example. You're going to want to make sure you add Niagara as a plugin dependency. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be a very display a very simple use case. So I'm not going to add any dependencies. Uh, and that's pretty much the plugin properties right there. I hit OK. Next is the current state. That's essentially the current state of that game feature right now. Since it was created and its initial state was set to active, the current state right here is set to active. I'm going to switch that to registered. Uh, actually, let me switch it back to active. Right here, it basically says uh, deactivate the feature before editing the game feature data. Uh, that's another reason why it's ideal to be in registered or at least loaded. Um, because when it's active and if you try to edit it, it could be, it could lead to some issues. All right, back to registered. Um, so the bread and butter for a game feature is under the actions. And currently, in Preview 2, not Preview 2, Early Access 2, you have four options. So those four options are essentially cheats. Um, yeah, cheats are basically debugging. Um, 
yeah, right here, cheat manager. Yeah, basically debugging uh, cheats. Uh, you have components. This is the one I'm primarily going to be covering in this video, um, just because that's going to be the more the ideal use case currently. Um, there's data re data registry and data registry source. Um, this is basically um, adding data sources uh, through game features that you can toggle on and off. For example, if you have a whole bunch of uh, a huge weapon database um, from the, the register as a data registry, you can add it by this. Um, I'll be covering data registries in a different video, so make sure you're subscribed, but yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and add components. And this one, so it adds a components right here and you have component lists. So you have an array of elements. Um, I'm gonna add one to this. And then, so for each array, there's gonna be four options here. Uh, two are the primary ones. One is the actor class. That's essentially the target actor class that you wanna add the component class to. So let's say for example, in actor class, there's the, the third person character. Um, so I'd set the actor class as third person character, and then the component class would be whatever type of feature you want to add to that third person character. It could be a gun, it could be an ability, it could be, um, it can be pretty much anything you program pretty much. Um, heck, it could also just be like a, a HUD that you load, a widget you load. For example, you could have a, a widget component. Um, so let me do a brief example here. So I'm going to go to the content browser here. Uh, I'm going to keep this window. Actually, I'm going to bring that window off. Um, I'm going to make a basic blueprint. So blueprint actor BP example. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open that. And one very important aspect before an actor can be designated for a game feature or before a component can be added to a, ah, not an actor. Yeah, actually an actor, yeah. Um, actor is, that should be game framework. Here he is. You need to add it as a receiver. So get game framework component manager. This is uh, from one of the plugins and then you branch off of that, add receiver. So on begin play, it's going to be added as a receiver. So now whenever this actor is in play in session and the game feature is set to active, this actor will get that component that is designated. So compile, save, that's all I want from this. So I'm going to close BP example and let's move that over. And I'm going to bring this into the world here. So now I have the actor. Now I need to create the component. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the example feature content here. That's actually something I forgot to cover <laughs> initially is that um, since this is a plugin, this is going to show up in the content browser under the source panel over here. If you don't have the source panel, may, you're going to have to go to the content browser settings and make sure you have show source panels and show plugin content enabled. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and create a blueprint class. Here, I'm going to go ahead and make a, what would be a good thing? I'm going to go ahead and make a, let's do an actor class. Sure. BP example ac or ac fractor class so let's go ahead and open that and bring this over pop that up here so this is going to essentially be the class that is added so i'm going to go ahead and do do a loop for loop 10 times spawn actor. So essentially what I'm creating right here is basically over the course of this loop, I'm going to spawn static mesh actors. 
that are basically cubes. And it's going to be spawning in a radius around the BP example. And this is just a very basic, very, very basic example. Um, so set stack mesh right here. And then, so the reason why that nothing is showing up here is because I don't have engine content showing. So let's show engine content. And I want a cube. Let's do quite a few cubes to select from. Let's do this one. All right, so I'm going to do that. Now I need to spawn transform. So let's do a random. Uh, should I do a random? No, let's not do a random. Split this because I just want the location. I don't want the rotation. All right, let's do a random here and then random point and bounding box. Origin, zero, zero, and then box extends. Let's do 250 and direction. All right, so there's that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna add a, a, a clean upper because let's say if, or when I deactivate this feature, I want to make sure that it cleans up what occurred. So let's go ahead and oops. Let's set this as an array. This is a very roundabout way. So this is basically cache stack meshes. Actually, uh, cache cubes. Why not? And then add. Make sure this is nice and managed. And also, as you notice here, I'm cleaning up my nodes as I go. Spaghetti code is not ideal. So let's say on destruction, destroy. All right, let's see on play. <laughs> uh, essentially the same. Um, actually. So I'm going to do a for loop, destroy actor. So basically when this actor or this component ends, it's going to go through all the cache cubes and destroy them. So, and then on begin play, it's going to spawn the cubes. In play, it's going to destroy them. So now that we have that, so let's go back to our game feature. Now we're going to go ahead and do example for the actor class and example AC for the actor component. So what I'm going to do right here in order for us to manually activate or deactivate the feature, I'm going to go to the level blueprints. Uh, typically, I would do this in a more event oriented system, but I'm just going to add it to keybinds one and two just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and do one and I'm going to do two. And currently in early access two, uh, it's not exposed to be able to programmatically activate or deactivate game features. You can expose it manually, um, but they did, they do have console commands that you can utilize. So and console, execute console. So to activate it, one is going to be activation. I'm essentially going to be doing load game feature plugin and then space, and then you type in the name of that feature. So in my case, example feature. And then I'm going to copy this, put this in number two, and then this is going to be deactivation. So there's two ones you can do actually there's deactivate game feature plugin or there's unload game feature plugin i want to do unload just because it's less typing there we go i'm gonna hit uh, save for this map example map save 
and we're good. So let's go ahead and hit play. All right, so now we're here. Let's go ahead and activate the plugin. They spawn, deactivate, it's all cleaned up. Activate, they spawn, deactivate, it's all cleaned up. And that's a wrap. Give this video a thumbs up if it was informative, thumbs down if it flat out sucked. If you want more information about modular game features or anything Unreal Engine in general, head on over to unrealdirective.com. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below or head on over to the Unreal Directive Discord, where I tend to be lurking about. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side. See ya.